Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this final installment of my back to school series, I'm going to be showing you how to make three easy vegan breakfast recipes that you can prep ahead of time. So when you have a busy morning, whether that be you need to get to school or you're rushing to get to work, you can just grab them and go in no time at all and still get a healthy, delicious meal. This video is produced in collaboration with Thrive Market. As you guys know and have probably noticed, I do work with Thrive on a pretty regular basis to bring you yummy vegan recipe content. And that's because I honestly love their website because it has all of my favorite healthy, vegan, gluten-free, etc., non-perishable pantry staples. And I love that I can order them from the comfort of my own room in my pajamas. They get sent straight to my door. And I also love that their prices are 25 to 50% lower than what you would find at a grocery store. So if you live in the United States and you haven't tried out Thrive Market yet, you can click the link in the description of the video to get an additional 25% discount off of your first order as well as free shipping and a free 30-day trial and if you're already a Thrive Market member don't forget to check their homepage or sign up for their email list and check your inbox frequently because they have a different deal of the day for current members too so it can be a discount on a certain product or a sale or something like that so it's a win-win situation for everyone I think that's all I have to say about that for now so let's get into these breakfast recipes First, we're going to be making some peanut butter and jelly overnight oats. This recipe is very simple. It has only five ingredients, but it tastes like the classic PB&J that we all know and love. So first, we're actually going to be making some peanut milk. And to do this, we're going to be using peanut butter. I really actually love the Thrive Market peanut butter. I like how it is nice and smooth and creamy, and it tastes very peanutty. I've had other natural peanut butters that don't taste as good, so I would totally recommend this one. So we're going to take about a tablespoon of that. And in order to make our peanut milk, we're going to add a tiny bit of water at first and then whisk this together until the peanut butter sort of dissolves into the water you don't want to add all the water at once or it will be too difficult to whisk but then we're going to add the rest of our water and this is going to be our non-dairy milk non-dairy milk is essentially nuts and water anyways but this way we get more of a peanut flavor throughout our entire oatmeal so we're going to add the rest of our overnight oat ingredients which includes some chia seeds and some rolled oats you could also use quick oats plus a little bit of maple syrup just to help sweeten things up a tad. You can leave it out if you want, but it's only a teaspoon per serving and I think it really does add a nice flavor. So you're going to mix everything together and as you can see, the mixture looks a little bit runny, but I did film a time lapse to show you that the oats will absorb all the liquid, so do not fear. After about five minutes or so, as you can see, the oats have absorbed a lot and the oats and chia seeds will continue to do this overnight in the fridge and your final mixture will be nice and thick. So you're going to scoop half of the mixture out and I wanted to make these kind of like a sandwich itself. So we're going to put half of the mixture in the bottom of a glass jar or a Tupperware and then we're going to top it with some chia seed jam. I have a full tutorial on my blog how to make this. So if you wanna check it out, it will be linked below. I think it's a great alternative to store-bought jams. So we're going to put between two and three tablespoons of that in the middle. You can add some peanut butter if you want for the full sandwich, but I think there's enough peanut flavor in the oats and I'd like to top it later. So we're going to top the jam with the rest of our oats and then I just topped it with a little bit more jam and like I said a nice drizzle of peanut butter and then I like a little crunch and texture in my breakfast as well so I decided to add some peanuts as well I think the drizzle of peanut butter and the peanuts on top totally takes the oatmeal over the edge it makes it taste super realistic and delicious so I would recommend it and there you go this recipe is very easy to multiply and the overnight oats will last for five to six days in the fridge so you can make a bunch of them on Sundays and just grab and go in the morning when you want a hearty and nourishing and yummy breakfast next we're going to be making some superfood smoothie cubes I don't know about you guys but I put a lot of crap in my smoothies crap as in healthy crap but it can take a while to put it all in my smoothies so my alternative is to mix everything ahead of time so to start out we're going to add some fruit to a blender I'm using strawberries and blueberries and some banana but you can use whatever fruit you have or whatever fruit you normally like to add into your smoothies the recipe is linked below but it is very customizable I also like to add some zucchini to my smoothies to give it more volume and also because I don't like ice and I think the zucchini works better. I really hate ice in my smoothies. Also adding some ground flaxseed as well as some superfood smoothie mix from Sunfood that I got on Thrive Market. It's much cheaper there, but I do really like this mix. It has some protein powder as well as other superfoods in it. So it's like an all-in-one sort of powder. I'm also adding some cinnamon because I love cinnamon. And I'm adding some nut butter because I'm just going to blend this with water later and the nut butter is adding creaminess. Can't forget about our greens though, guys. I love my greens. So I decided to add some too for some extra hashtag health. 
Then you're just going to put the lid on your blender and you're going to blend everything together. If you don't have a blender with a tamper, you actually might wanna do this in a food processor because I think everything will blend together better. You basically want a thick mixture. We don't wanna add any liquid because we're basically making a concentrated smoothie mixture. And then we're going to add this into ice cube trays and freeze it. So then in the mornings when we're busy, we can just add water and go. So I'm using some silicone ice cube trays. I will link them below as well. I really like them. I thought the cubes popped out of them really easily. And one serving of the smoothie mix filled about one tray. So if you are doing this for meal prep, you will need multiples. I actually think the set comes in instead of two. And I know I didn't blow my second smoothie as well, but it's getting blended later, so it doesn't really matter. So you're going to freeze these overnight and then the morning of when you want to make your smoothie, you're actually going to let your smoothie cubes sit out for a few minutes just to soften a little bit. They'll still be frozen though, so don't worry. And then you're going to add a liquid. I'm using water just because, like I said, we added the nut butter earlier, but if you wanted to do a non-dairy milk, you could. And you could just add a little bit of water if you want this smoothie to be thicker, sort of like a smoothie bowl. But I was going for the smoothie here, so I added extra water so it would thin out more and because more smoothie like it really is up to you obviously a smoothie is a faster option but you do you boo so once we're done with that pretty self-explanatory I think you guys know how to drink a smoothie but you can pour it into a to-go container or a glass add in a reusable metal straw if you would like and you're good to go however if you want to make a smoothie bowl I would totally recommend adding this granola it does happen to be from Thrive Market but I am so freaking obsessed with it guys I wanted an excuse to put it in a video so I could eat more of it and get more of it um, it's made from sprouted nuts and the vanilla cinnamon flavor is my favorite I've tried the other ones but I think this one is personally the best it's very crunchy and addicting and I love it and it also matches my fingernails um, so you're just going to to pour your smoothie or smoothie bowl into a bowl if you have the extra time to do this and then you can tap it with granola this was actually my smoothie and I just repurposed it into the bowl which is why it's thinner than I would normally like it to be but it was still delicious and it's a great way to start out your mornings with some healthy fruits some veggies some flax seeds and some crunchy really really yummy granola Last but not least, we're going to be making some banana oatmeal breakfast cookies. These cookies are perfect if you're getting a little tired of oatmeal or you just don't want oatmeal. And I mean, who doesn't want cookies for breakfast? So we're going to start out with a ripe banana. You want it to have brown spots on it. It can even be a little bit spottier than this if you want. It will make it taste even sweeter. So we're going to peel our banana and break it off into chunks into our bowl and then just use a fork to mash everything together. I like to mash it like so with a fork as you can see, but I also like to stir it a bit. I think this helps to break down the banana more and help it to release more moisture, which we want for these cookies. And then for the rest of our ingredients, we're going to be using some rolled oats as well as some oat flour, which I made just by blending rolled oats in the blender. And this helps to make the cookies have a little bit more of a cookie texture and be more fluffy. We're also going to add some baking powder as well as some cinnamon. I love cinnamon, but you could also switch these up and add in different spices like cardamom or nutmeg. We're also going to add some salt to bring out the flavors, some applesauce for a bit of moisture, and a touch of maple syrup just to sweeten things. If you are used to unsweetened breakfast, you could totally skip the maple syrup, but I would recommend it if you like sweeter breakfast. I tested the cookies without it, and they weren't very sweet at all. Obviously, that would also depend on your banana, though. It's up to you, though. Can't forget our crunchy nuts, though, for some healthy fats and to keep us satiated for a little bit longer. I'm using walnuts. I did get them on Thrive Market. I like to buy all my nuts on Thrive because they are cheaper there. Huzzah! I don't know why I just said huzzah, but anyways, um, we're now going to make our cookies. I'm using a three tablespoon scoop. It's an ice cream scoop. It's super handy because it pops right out of the scoop. I would recommend it if you have it. And then you're just going to bake your cookies on a baking tray, either lined with parchment paper or a reusable silicone mold. And the cookies aren't going to expand too much in the oven. So you do want to press them down with your hand into the size that you would like. This recipe makes about seven and a half cookies. Um, so you can make them a little bit smaller if you wanted an even number depending on how many you're going to eat for breakfast So we're going to pop these into the oven for a few minutes then take them out and we're going to flip them just to brown them on both sides and Then pop them back in the oven and then afterwards you're good to go in terms of serving size I'd say I usually am not that hungry in the morning So I would probably eat between like two and three of these cookies But I would still eat them with something else like maybe some extra nut butter or some fruit on the side But I encourage you all to listen to your own 
hunger levels and eat according to your own needs as we all should be doing. Either way, these cookies are a great and a delicious option. They are nice and chewy. They're kind of like baked granola bars almost. The inside is nice and fluffy still, but you still get some nice crisp on the outside as well. And there you have it, folks. Let me know in the comments below which recipe was your favorite or which one you're most likely to make. Or if you have another breakfast recipe that you like to prep ahead of time, let me know in the comments too so we can all help each other out, be more efficient, and not skip the most important meal of the day. Also, I did film a similar video to this last year with three different make ahead breakfast ideas. So I will link that below as well as my playlist for all of my other back to school lunch, snack, recipe inspiration in case you still need a few recipes to help motivate you to go to class, get those good grades and get that degree or something like that. A big thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video as well. Don't forget to check out the link in the description below for new members to get your discount. I was able to get all of the non-perishable items, so everything except for the produce on Thrive Market, and I definitely saved a ton of money. I think it's a great way for people to get access to healthy and affordably priced healthier groceries, especially if you live in an area that doesn't have as many vegan options, or if it does have vegan options, they're harder to get to, harder to find, or more expensive. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know that you want me to film more videos like this. And while you're down there, if you feel so inclined, you can hit that little subscribe button right there. I post two new videos every single week and would love to have you in this awesome community. I think that's it for now. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.